weren't you, but if I was you, I would have been like Barbara Hitman and you would have been the one I talked to. Like, I don't give a fuck if you fucking this nigga, just tell him to stop screwing the business. So if niggas found out you was fucking the hell, that could really ruin the image. We're talking to the rockin' with Sam, Captain Liam. Nigga, that's us. Y'all the poster child symbol for black love. What it do, what it do. It's 903 Boxing. I'm your host, Charles J. Say, Say bye. Um, public service announcement. Uh, I did a video about this before. I'm just going to go a little deep on it. Uh, Remy Ma has proven to be for the streets. For the streets. Um, to those who don't know what for the streets mean, um, it's, 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 uh, pretty self-explanatory. She for the streets, bro. She, she's not, she's not wifey type. She's not wifey material. Um, yeah, she's not wifey material at all, bro. Um, I'm gonna get into this shit, man. Um... A little history. Uh, Papoose and Remy, they're married. They got a daughter. Been together for a while. I'm going to say about 10, 15 years. Papoose held her down for seven years while she was on lock. And I'm going to tell you the coldest part about it. It ain't too many rappers I know that would have held their uh, woman down. And let alone, you didn't hear none about Papoose out here with these some young singing female or some young rapping female. You ain't heard none of that. You ain't heard his names in the blogs fucking with this female. And I ain't saying he didn't, but at least he knew how to do his shit. He didn't put his business out there in the public to embarrass her. Yeah, he probably had his little honeys. He probably had 30 of them. But the point is, <laughs> she ain't never, it, it never got back to her. Uh, he held her down. He went to visit her. Which is an awkward uh, position for a man. Uh, it would just feel weird going to visit my woman. And she incarcerated and I, You know, I'm used to be. <laughs> anyway. Uh, it's a lot of shit, bro. Uh, let me tell you something. What was solidified that Remy Ma is for the streets, bro. Uh, when Geechee got it, that, that's who was just rapping. And he was battling Easy to Block Captain. Who is her part-time lover? Anyway, uh, probably finna be a full-time lover. Um, yeah, when I tell you Geechee Gotti straight went the fuck off. And then you heard his flow, and it's not about his flow. It's how Remy was looking, because he was looking her dead in the face. 
he was in her face. And she had that look like, you know, I've seen that look a lot of times. You know, that's that look when a woman been telling you she ain't been cheating, but she, she finally get caught. That was that look. She looked so fucking guilty. When I tell you she looked so fucking guilty, she didn't look offended. Like, motherfucker, I would never, who, who the fuck you ought to paint me a picture? Man, she looked completely guilty. Remy Ma looked the guiltiest for another thing. The reason why I say she for the streets, and a lot of women out there are for the streets, and you don't even know you for the streets. You for the streets. It's a lot of women that are in relationships that are really for the streets. Let me tell you something, bro. Um, one example is that uh, married women, women in relationships, and especially a lot of these older women, because Remy Ma like forty two. You seem to think that you can dress like these young girls and these young strippers and these, uh... Because y'all dress no different from Sexy Red and Sukiana. Remy Ma got her titties out. They be awed up and shiny and shit. Yeah, it was a picture. I said, God damn, I didn't even know your titties were that big. Did you get a breast, in, uh, some breast implants or some shit? Um, yeah, when you was coming up, we didn't see your titties like that. Why women wait till they get in their 40s to want to show their titties off and their body off and shit like What I'm saying is this. When I'm out in public, I always see brothers with a woman and a woman dressed like a dress like a stripper. And you know the sad thing, most men can't handle that shit. Most men really be mad and when they walk in with a woman that's got on this see through shit and she look like a stripper, they be looking and, and watching and seeing what men looking at them and mugged up. Bro, why you got your girl out there like that? Because men really don't like that. And, and some dudes wanna think they showing off, but most men really don't like when they woman dress like that. So, and another reason why, let me say this, because women are get ah, we wear we want, like, it's beauty. Let me tell you time, times we live in it, and it's always been this way. Men are predators, uh, naturally, and um, they're going to come after you, especially with our street culture and all this gang, gang, gang shit, bro. Uh, the, the wrong situation, bro, you can get hurt behind your girl looking uh, too sexy. Because dudes, man, especially if they with their homies, oh shit, because dudes gonna come at you in a disrespectful manner because you already revealing yourself. Dudes gonna talk to you like you a hoe. Whether you with your man or not, you can be in the wrong situation where your man gotta defend you and it's four other dudes and he end up losing his life. That is real shit. Because dudes would disrespect. Man, most of the time when you see dudes uh, uh, doing all that calling, hey, oh shit, goddamn bitch. Most of the time, she dressed like she for the streets. You don't see no woman uh, with her clothes, all uh, everything covered up, and dudes whistling up. No, dudes whistle at girls that got their ass out, their titties out. So, just a little message, uh, you know. <laughs> but, you know, women, you know, women these days, they just think uh, you can dress like a hoe, but it don't make you a hoe. She's a hoe. You know she's a hoe. Anyway, uh, Remy Ma... This is some of the most embarrassing shit. And this took me to a personal time in my life. You know, I hurt for uh, Papu because I went through some shit like this. I'm going to explain it later on. But when y'all sit down at uh, Good Morning with New York and shit, and it, this is them sitting down. You see how happy Remy my look. And y'all just together all the time. And you be whispering in each other ear and laughing and shit like that. Uh... He's a black captain, which is right next to her. He's about 25. Fat Papu's about 40. Or some shit like that. And another thing. I know you got this battle rap shit going. And that's cool. Why you ain't got Papu's? Why y'all ain't like co-doing this thing? And why the art? Why why don't you get a bunch of female battle rappers? Why easy the black captain wouldn't sign the Papu's? It, it should have been some shit. And another thing. Out of all the artists that you got signed to you. You always seem to be uh, with Easy the Block Captain. Out of all your artists, that's the one you favor the most, and that's where you, you always around them. Y'all laughing, and y'all, y'all, bro, everybody see that y'all close as shit. And um, just ain't a good look, bro. And uh, at that battle, you thought, <laughs> and it's already a rumor that Papu knocked Easy out, which, which I applaud. You should have knocked him out. And you don't, you know, and this is what I knew you was guilty. Uh, Remy Ma did not want the world to know that shit. She put a non-disclosure in uh, before battling Easy the Block Captain. You can't bring up the fact that Papoose knocked him, knocked him out. 
Why would you put that in a non-disclosure? Like, you don't want easy to block Captain being embarrassed for getting knocked out? You're trying to protect your artists? That's what you're trying to do? Listen, bro. This is the most hoe shit. I, I swear, bro. It be the real man like Papoose, bro, that get dogged the fuck out, that get shitted on, bro. You know, um, I, I, I just don't respect it. Um, and Easy to Block Captain is not going out his way. Neither one of them have ever went out their way to say, we ain't fucking around. That's the coldest part about it. Neither one of them are going out their way. Man, hell no. She ain't tried to protect the image of her family. She ain't tried to protect her image as a woman. Remy Ma ain't went out the way to protect. And she, man, any real woman would be furious. And for one, any real woman wouldn't put herself in a situation to be around a younger man all the time. Yeah, you done fixed his teeth and shit. Before he got with you, he had buck teeth. That motherfucker gap was long, uh, was wider than Highway 59. And now you got some braces in his mouth. He got him a grill and shit. <laughs> you done fixed him up. He got plenty of money. He was broken, dusty as shit before he got with you. So you done built him the fuck up. <laughs> well, you know, it be lying. It be shit like that. Because Papoose the one really built you up. But you will leave a real one and go get with a younger man and try to build him up. It's fucked up, bro. It's fucked up. Um, uh, This shit is way bigger than battle rapping. Um. I'm telling you, bro, these dudes play dangerous games, you know. Um, and easy to block Captain and came out and said shit to Papu and, 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 and targeting him and talking shit to him and this and that. So your artist is talking shit to your husband and you in the middle of this shit. That's what I'm saying. Women sometimes put themselves in positions like they a man. Why is men signed to you? Why are you the CEO? Why you want to be the boss of men? Because men will always take advantage. Women act like they can be a boss amongst men, bro. It'll never happen. It'll never happen because it's just like a female guard, bro, putting a bunch of female guards in prison, thinking they can be the boss over men, and ain't nobody going to spread their legs, and ain't nobody going to bring no drugs. Bro, it's some of the most smooth talking. Some of the most smooth talking, manipulative men you have ever. It's thousands of men in this fucking prison. And you think these women ain't going to choose nobody? Man, this dude's with life sentence. Uh, she know he'll never get out. And he got about three of them uh, doing whatever he say. Bro, man. Um, anyway. You know, it's some dudes out there that, uh, that can really, uh, you know, have you out there. So when you be thinking you so strong that you can conquer and, and 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 own and have a bunch of men work for you, bro, somebody gonna somebody fucking somebody one of them rappers gonna end up, and that's what happened. You put yourself in that position. I don't see Papoose around here trying to sign a bunch of female rappers. I don't see Papoose doing that. I don't see Papoose with a young female MC and he all on uh uh sit downs on talk shows with her and shit. Papoose ain't do that. Man, I'm finna get off this money. Let me give you a short story. Um, you know, nowadays we get, you know, real men get called simps. You know, I used to say I was a simp when I got out of prison. But looking back, I really wasn't no simp, bro. I was just a good man. Uh, but in today's time, it's straight simpish. Uh, I got out of prison. And, uh, yeah, uh, my ex or whatever. I had knew her before, and she knew I was getting out. And I'm gonna tell you another thing. Women will prey on you knowing you're getting out because... It's either two things you're going to do when you get out. Because for one, you vulnerable. Especially uh, down between your legs. You vulnerable as shit. You either finna fuck a lot of women or you finna get one woman and just, yeah, be devoted and shit like that. Because you've been alone. You've been deprived of a lot of shit. So you're very weak. And she got me and I was weak as shit. And uh, she had two kids. She was staying with her mama. Yeah, when I got out, I was staying with my mom. I was on the ankle monitor for about two to three months. Um, yeah, first day out, my pops told me, man, this girl been asking about you and this and that. And so me personally, I was just on some, well, ain't nothing like, you know what I'm saying, getting you something on the first day out. You know, first day out, you got something lined up. Fuck it. So I went with the flow. Come on over, this and that. So I let it be known. 
uh, from the beginning. Listen, I'm just trying to be friends. I ain't trying to. I got to get myself together as a man. This and that. This and that. Women. Women. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Okay. So one thing led to that, which led to a, a lot more shit. To which she started crying, coming over, and man, my mama step. My mama's husband. He just can't stand me and the kids. He's threatening to kick us out and tell us we need to find somewhere to go and crying and. You know, my mama treat me like shit and she was never there for me and this and that. And it just, and with them kids and shit like that, I had a heart. I just really felt bad. And I felt like it was my duty to get them out of that situation. So within six days after being out, had a job. Within a month, I got an apartment, moved her and the kids in. And uh, yeah, did everything. Because I felt like I wanted to... I just wanted I wanted you to I wanted to be a great man to you and I didn't think you deserved whatever you went through and this and that. And uh I just felt real bad for it. Just you know, people can give you that story and you just yeah, I just felt bad and very bad for the kids. So anyway, I got in the kids' life and uh man, really really grew to love these kids as if they was my own. Yeah, they wanted to change their name to my name, all that. Oh, fast forward End up getting a nice brick home, this and that, and all that. But anyway, let's fast forward. So one day, uh, end up getting into it uh, over some petty shit. And I'm going off and this and that. And uh, she called her laws. So I'm going off and going off. Not in calm down by now. Laws show up. Uh, this is in Marshall, Texas. Uh, I'm just showing you how uh, <laughs> these motherfuckers do. When they pull up, I'm just I'm nonchalant and keep in mind I'm on parole. Uh, I said, "Yes, officer, this and that." Uh, sir, could you could you turn around? I said, "What's going on?" Yeah, we just arguing. What, N sir? Could you put your hands behind your back? Put me in handcuffs. Put me in that car. And I remember uh, them kids looking at me just crying, and uh, I was looking at them from the back of the car turned around watching them the whole time watching them cry anyway so i'm thinking it can't be too much of nothing you know but still to lock me up and not even hear my side of the story okay go to court the next day uh for one i'm gonna have a no bun but when they tell me what i'm charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon uh don't know if you motherfuckers know about that charge uh, that's two to twenty ag and when I say ag, that means you got to do half. So if you get 20 years, you got to do 10 years before you even see parole. Uh, I ain't even been out of prison a, uh, about a year and a half at this time. I've been working, staying out the way. So I can't get out. I'm facing two to 20 years. <sighs> she comes to see me and I'm sorry. I, I didn't do I, I, I didn't. I didn't mean to do that. And I'm going to get this dropped and this drop. Okay. So, she said, I'm going to take classes and this and that. It, it was a thing where you could take classes and get the charges dropped. Uh, anyway, I, st I stayed in the county about nine months, facing two to 20, fighting for my life. Because I wasn't convinced that just because I've seen plenty of cases where the woman try to get it dropped and the state will pick it up. When the state pick it up, you fucked. I stayed in there nine months. They finally dropped the charge. But check this out. Let me tell you something about the system. It's, you could, they could know you didn't do a crime, but they will not completely dismiss the case. They will drop the charge from a felony to a misdemeanor. That's the new scheme. That way, I still get a, I get a, I get a charge out your bitch ass. I still get the state get money up out of you. The state can justify why they kept you in there for nine months. Okay, so uh, they charged me with terroristic threat, a misdemeanor. Okay. Later on, this terroristic threat, this charge would stop me from going to many jobs. It wasn't the felonies that I went to prison for that stopped me from getting hired at many different jobs. It's that terroristic threat and they charged me with something else. Uh, but anyway, uh, so even after doing nine months in the county, I was not released. I still had to go to ISF, which is a place for when you violate parole. See, it don't matter if you're not guilty or nothing. If you're on parole or probate, you're going to get violated. So I had to go to uh, ISF for three to four months or some shit like that. Whole time she's uh, writing and this and that here and there and uh, coming to see me. 
and uh get to hearing some rumors. Uh yeah, uh I don't know how it happened. Oh, one day um I'm talking to my sister and she said, You ain't heard you ain't heard and she had just got through coming to see and she said, You ain't heard about uh your girl and this and that. I'm like, What? Man So anyway I ended up calling her and she told me some dude tried to stab her and uh yeah and this and that and and i was like what are you trying to stab you for so i'm mad i'm ready to get out and do some shit so when i get out i get to hearing different shit oh man she was fucking with that dude she was staying with him so when i get out i'm asking all these questions what man you was fucking with you just just tell me bro no no i ain't mess with nobody this and that so eventually um Shit started adding up. And I'm going to fast forward everything. So, I'm still on parole. And uh, one day her homegirl sit me down and say, man, you don't even know who your girl is. Man, you don't even know. You don't know the half of this shit. And you think I'm a hoe. Nah, your girl, she's a hoe. Because her homegirl was a straight up hoe. And she used to brag about hoeing and getting money out of older men and shit like that. But she was like, man, she was fucking with this dude. A couple of them I knew. And this dude and this dude. So, man, I done got mad, man. I'm, and at this time, I'm living in Longview with her. So, I'm going off and this and that. She, nah, she lying. She was just hating and this and that. I still stay. I still stay. <laughs> uh, So, what happened? Something finally happened to where I was like, nah, I see some shit. I started seeing more and more shit. I said, this motherfucker done lived a whole nother life while I was in prison for some shit you put me in there. So I packed my shit one day and I just, and I went down the hall to this uh, older lady who I used to smoke weed with. She was cool though. And I put my bags over there. I called my cousin to come get me. Same cousin I knocked out a couple months ago. Same cousin that when I got set up, this motherfucker talking about he found drugs in my bag and showed it to my grandma and shit. Same cousin that has always told on me about shit. Yeah, I call him and this girl called and shit. Uh, so I'm waiting and I'm talking to the old school like, yeah, man, I, I gotta get the fuck away from her. She just ain't right. My cousin pull up. Uh, so I I'm I'm not on no confrontational shit. I got my bags. I'm finna get in his car and go. He come tell me, say, bro, say, bro. Man, a white boy just went in the apartment with your girl, bro. What? Yeah, he was looking around like he was looking for you. When he said that, it was off. I went to that fucking door, beat on it, and I was trying to kick that motherfucker in. She's already against, both of them are against the door trying to stop me from kicking in the door. I'm boom. And I'm every time I kick the door, I'm knocking it almost halfway open. I'm trying to squeeze through because I'm finna I'm finna destroy him. I'm finna destroy him. And I'm not even an abusive man, but I don't know what I would have done to him. I, I, I can't say I wouldn't have done that, but I was going to destroy him for sure, for sure. <sighs> Kicking in the door. I'm in a fit of rage. Next thing I know, boom. I see a big ass butcher knife coming through the door. She's stabbing it at me. It hit me in my arm. Ugh. And it went deep. Blood started going, shooting everywhere. Shooting all over the parking lot. My cousin, man, she cuss you, man. Uh, so, he didn't even give me a towel. The old lady went and got me a towel and this and that. I said, fuck it, just take me to the hospital. Take me to the hospital. Uh, my tea lady ended up coming up there and everything. They gave me like seven stitches or some shit like that. Might have been more. I don't know. They gave me some stitches. Soon as they stitched me up, the police came in. Uh, Charles Jernigan. Yeah, what's up? You under arrest, sir. What? I just got stabbed. What am I under arrest for? Um, just, just come with us. I said, listen, my cousin is right out there. He can tell you that I didn't do nothing wrong. I got stabbed. Uh, we talked to your cousin. He said he didn't see what happened. What? My cousin didn't even vouch for me. Anyway, so, uh... I go to Longview County Jail. I'm on parole. No bond. Faced with burglary or habitation, 2 to 20. None ag this time, but 2 to 20 still. I'm in there for 
allegedly uh, breaking into my own house that I lived in at the time. Okay. I'm just showing you, bro, how dirty this shit is out here. Boy, what would call the police out y'all here in these Texas? I don't know about nowhere else, bro. Them laws is going to get you. And they're going to charge you with the most, with the worst crime they can charge you with. Anyway, I remember praying and I was just like, God, get me out of this situation, man. I, I don't need to deal with it and this and that. Um... I'm going to say this real quick. Sometimes you can think you love somebody so much. Uh, love these days. You know, black folks think the harder, the harder, the more crazy you act, the more you love me. Nah, bro. We just, we fucked up as black people. Uh, black love is just some crazy shit. <laughs> it's just some crazy shit. And you think the crazier this motherfucker act behind you, that mean the better you fuck it. That mean you fucking are good. And yeah, yo, you think your dick is just a shit. Nah, bro, that motherfucker was crazy with the without you fucking her. Huh? Uh, I'm going to tell you what a lot of black men and black women suffer from. We suffer from abandonment issues. Uh, especially if you've been to prison. Uh, you've been to prison, you're a lonely man. There's a loneliness inside you, so a lot of times it ain't that I'm just you just so crazy about this motherfucker. You just don't want to be alone. You just don't want to be alone. Sometimes uh, black folks these days just want somebody to be miserable with <laughs> or some shit. But anyway, that's a whole other story. But I prayed and uh, I remember I talked to my pops uh, while I was in there, and uh, I was just like, pops, okay. And by this time, after I started, you know, praying and just. Uh, I said I'm done bro So I write him Because he was still finna try to be with me and all that I write and said nope I'm done That's it bro You didn't put me in jail twice Oh let me say this Let me throw this in When she put me in jail the first time And I stayed nine months And then did three to four months in the ISF, Uh, Some shit happened with the kids To where CPS was called And the kids was taken away from her Also those kids was brainwashed into thinking that I was just beating on their mama. I was labeled that in my own hometown. Motherfuckers was really calling me an abusive ass, man. Never put my hands on it, ever. Anyway, so this this label was out on me that I'm beating up and all this shit. And uh, the kids hate me now. And they stay with the granny. And the granny has brainwashed them into thinking that I'm the worst thing. That, and that all this is my fault. She lost them kids after I was in jail. Never lost them while I was there. Um... So I had to throw that in there. So the kids hate me, especially the boy. Just can't stand me. And uh, they blame me for everything they're going through. To this day, that boy still hate me. So, uh, but the little girl, um, we was texting and shit like that. But it, it's like, bro, the, the way that girl used to look up to me, all that shit is gone. Because it was years later and shit like that. It's just like, you know, it, it's just a complete difference. You know, out of sight, out of mind. But anyway, it just, those bonds was broken. And that was devastating. That was very devastating to me. But anyway, <coughs> so, uh, where was I at? Yeah, I'm praying. I wrote a letter, said I'm done. Next thing I know, I'm talking to my sister. It wasn't a week later. And she posting pictures with some dude and shit. I said, I, so after I wrote the letter, said I'm done. It wasn't a week and she posted the dude that she was probably already fucking with. So anyway, um, I'm still fighting this case. I'm in the county four to five months. Uh, every day I'm just like, man, you just don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how long I'm going to be in the county fighting this shit. And in my mind, I'm just like, man, I don't want to go to trial. One thing about black, we are scared to go to trial for some shit, even if you know you're right. Because when the state spend all that money, they're going to try to make sure they get a conviction. So, one day they called me. John again. Uh, you got court. Now, normally you're supposed to know when you got court. This is just out the blue. So, I go to court. Court is one of the most, it's, it's. Bro, you got to sit in cell after cell for hours after hours waiting on court. It is a long, all-day process. I go to court. Uh, my little court-appointed lawyer come. <laughs> he said, uh, yeah, uh, we're going to drop it from burglar habitation to a, a assault and some other shit. I was like, what? And I'll never forget when he showed me the police. When the, he showed me the report of what she said. 
I'll never forget. She said to them folks that I kicked her, I beat her, I punched her, I was kicking her, throwing her around. He made it like I was a maniac. Anyway, so he said, I can get it dropped. I said, what? Yeah, I can get it dropped from burglar habitation to a assault. Well, you gonna sign for it? And you get time served if you get out today. Shit. Sign for it. So, uh, sign for it, got released that day. But you know what? Those two charges have kept me away from being hired from a lot of places, bro. It wasn't the felonies that I went to prison. It wasn't the shit that I really did. It was the shit that I was accused of. That It, it makes my record look horrible. But anyway, uh, it's just an example. I done went too far into this shit, but... Oh, and it's no, it's no, I ain't got no ill willings towards this girl or none of that. You know, you live and you learn. There's no hate in my heart for her or none of that shit. You know, she done what she felt like she had to do to survive. So, I'm old, I'm more mature now. And uh, I, don't, I don't hold on to certain shit. Uh, but them kids didn't deserve that. Them kids' life was destroyed. Because they living with their granny way in the country, can't go nowhere, just sitting in the house all day. And it just, you know, I brought love to them kids and I brought a foundation you know, real shit. But um Yeah, Remy Ma, you for the streets. <laughs> you for the streets. They're just uh, pretty much playing what I gotta say. And that uh nowadays uh being a real man and a good man, you consider the simp. All good men are simps, so you consider the simp. It ain't no more value in this shit. So for a man to hold a woman down for seven years while she locked up, that's a hell of a man, bro. That's a hell of a goddamn man. And whether you fuck with Easy the Black Captain or not, whether it's true or not, bro, you the fact that you ain't went out the way to try to make this shit, you still fucking with them. And for one, as soon as them rumors started, you should at least say, nah, bro, you can't be signed to me. You you jeopardizing my me and my marriage. You jeopardizing my marriage. You can't be signed to me no more. Yeah, you a cold rapper and shit like that. And I don't give a fuck if you got to sue me or whatever. You can't be signed to me because you're getting in the way of me and my, my marriage. And everybody's saying we fucking around. So I'm finna nip all this in the... No, she still, he still signed with her. They still travel together and all that kind of shit. So the disrespect... I'm telling you, bro. Um, and I'm going to say it again, bro. It's a lot of you women out here that really think you ain't for the streets, bro. But the way you dress, you for the streets, bro. You for the street. You, you know, we try to mix this. I'm a woman, but I can just express myself how I want. Bro, there's too many predators out here. It's too many dudes waiting on a woman. They're showing all this and revealing all this. And they're going to disrespect you. Soon it, that's the new thing. When dude holler at you and you ain't talking about he's going to disrespect you. Whether you're with your man or not. So, you putting your man in a situation where he can go to jail for some shit. Or, or get jammed up or even get killed over some shit. Because you don't know how to dress like a woman. But anyway, um, it's just our culture though. It's just our culture and the shit we believe, but uh, nah, that shit ain't right. But uh, yeah, I did it. I even did a song about the shit that I went through. But uh, yeah, man, it just it's just a lesson learned, bro. Um, you live and you learn. You live and you learn. <laughs> and you know it's crazy. I've seen so many dudes who act. Most of the dudes who actually beat on women, they never go to jail. I seen it. All. I've seen it my whole life. Them the ones don't even go to jail. And them the ones that the family don't. They don't. Bro, you know what's crazy? My own family turned on me. They act, and they knowing I don't do this. They treated me like I was a fucking abusive mother. It's like my family even took us out. And you know what's crazy? The second time she put me in jail, it, even though by then they know, like this motherfucker, they done heard about what she doing in the streets while I'm locked up, all that. Motherfuckers kept me in jail. <laughs> Didn't nobody bum me out or nothing. They let me fight that shit by myself and blind and say, your ass shouldn't have went back to them. So that's just how black black folks are just blame you <laughs> and whatever you do uh, or just blame you for your decision making, even if they know you in the right. And even if they know this, this your freedom you dealing with. No, nah, he can handle that shit. His ass shouldn't have went back to him. So that's that old fake ass tough love that we show each other. And uh, we just don't fight for what's right. We don't, bro. There's so many motherfuckers I, I'm not, that that beat on a woman and still can go around the woman family and get treated like he's the shit and this and that. Now the real abuse of motherfuckers they don't get pointed out. But yeah, I was labeled that and looked at like that. And um, one thing about it, when you get that on your record, bro, a motherfucker can always fuck over you. Yeah, my record's so bad if a woman just call the police and say anything, I'm going straight to jail. So, you know, that's these laws we live up under, and it's fucked up out here. But, uh, 
You know, love who you love, bro. And if you're going to love them, uh, be committed to that shit. There's nothing worse than having your business in the streets. How the fuck we in a relationship, but it's a rumor that you fucking some younger dude? Nah, bro, that ain't real. So, in my opinion, Remy Ma is definitely for the streets. This is 903 Boxing. I'm your host, George J. That I'm out.